life, culture and current events from a biblical perspective. 2020 with Neil Johnson on Vision. As you know, the conflict continues in the Russian invasion of Ukraine. A unique perspective today as we might imagine asking where Christians stand in this deadly conflict. Our next guest has a 40-year career in Christian broadcasting in Eastern Europe and Central Asia with FEBC, the Far East Broadcasting Company. Rudy Weans is a veteran minister overseeing FEBC Eurasia, covering both Russian and Ukraine sides of the conflict, along with Moldova and other nations in that region and Central Asia. He deals with tensions that we may never have even considered and walks a tightrope between the two warring nations, Russia and Ukraine. Rudy Weans, a special welcome along to 2020. Well, thank you, Niels. Rudy, we assume that being a Christian broadcaster, uh, and you've got two sides of a conflict here, that somehow or other you can't take sides. How do you actually walk this tightrope? Well, as a follower of Christ, you know, I always consider myself a peacemaker. You know, so... And I remember before, actually, during the perestroika, before 91, when Soviet Union fell apart, it was, I think, 88 or 89, I visited Soviet Union. And, of course, at that time, everybody knew me, the KGB knew, and so they they asked different questions. And uh, fly, being in the airplane and the aeroflot, or scareflot, as we called it then, <laughs> okay. so, but... Anyway, so there was a businessman, so he was asking me what I'm doing for a living, you know, and so on. And so what do you say, missionary? They have no idea what it means, you know. So so I said, well, I am a peacemaker. And so I said, oh, are you with UN? I said, no, no, quite a bit higher. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that was, and I think that, that uh, with that, I almost answer your question, you know, so we in a ministry in sharing the gospel, sharing the news, the good news about Christ, you know, we make enemies friends, you know, so they become friends. Actually, the KGB was asking me if I, if the CIA is supporting us. I said, no, they're not smart enough. So they liked that. Uh, they were very reserved at that time. Uh, as they asked me why. So I said, well, if they really would understand what we're doing, we, we're basically, we, we are peacemakers. We, if we talk enemies into, you know, we, we sort of create friendship between them, you know, and so they become friends. And then they smiled uh, very reservedly, you know, and so on. I said, well, the KGB is not smart either, not, not, not smart enough either, you know, so they would actually support us if they knew what we are doing. Anyway, so for that reason, I think, you know, we are in the peacemaking, not the war-making business. I imagine that before this conflict broke out uh, with the Russian invasion of Ukraine, you were probably getting along with everyone fine. When you say there's suspicion when you're a Christian, has that increased since the invasion began? Well, there, of course, the Christians are on a, on a side of peace, you know, not the war. So... In, in the hearts, all Christians on both sides, Russian side, Ukrainian side, they would, they would, they are praying for the people in, you know, in, the, in this war situation, suffering the people who are dying and so on, and suffering because of the war, you know. So that's a general understanding. Even so, war creates enemies, you know, and so on. Then, when as soon as bullets fly, you know, so so you have different opinions, and because somebody was killed, you know. Russian soldier who aggressively went into Ukraine, you know, so he got killed, he comes home, and so the parents, the relatives, you know, they are, of course, sad, you know, because it's life lost. So for that reason, even among Christians now, there is some tensions. Of course, when you talk about the high church, you know, that has more, much, much more involved in politics, like the Orthodox Church, you know, and so on, then, then you talk about even some very rush kind of, uh, you know, kind of talks and animosity. Have you been able to traverse the border between Russia and Ukraine? You've spoken to audiences and you have operations working both in Russia and in Ukraine. Have you been able to visit both sides? Well, at this time, not not since the war started in February, you know, so I've not been. I wanted to go to Moscow, but I was counseled against, you know, not to go there. 
I was in Central Asia, you know, in Almaty and Bishkek. Um, but uh, it probably, I would, would be okay, you know, so because I am not, or we and F- SFABC, we're not taking parts and encouraging any fighting, you know. So not that we are absolute uh, pacifists in that sense, but, uh, but we, of course, we, we see war. It, that's not the way to, to make peace, you know, to find solutions or compromises. I imagine that in whatever commentary that you bring on FEBC, on both sides, whether it's the Russian outfit or the Ukrainian outfit, you've got to be obviously very careful about any sort of commentary that you might be able to bring. Do you take this peacemaker mentality for both sides? Is that your main position when it comes to the war? Yes, on air, on air, we like, especially on the Ukrainian side now, you know, there's lots of suffering, lots of killing happening, you know, like people are dying and lots of refugees. So we reach out to the people in need. So that's our main, main strategy. You know, we want to help people in need now, you know, and, and the suffering is, of course, much, much more on the Ukrainian side now, not on the Russian side. So, so for that reason, we reach out. So our Ukrainian team basically is full time involved with that and, and not only not only socially, you know, or with with food and with shelter and so on, with that kind of assistance, but also emotionally, spiritually. We get hundreds of calls every day where people ask to pray for them. Actually many, many hundreds of people on a daily basis accept Jesus as a personal Savior and Lord because, you know, it, it is challenging. It's difficult. I have met many, many refugees now and out, outside of Ukraine even, and so there's a great openness. And some of the people that were not a part of any any church, you know, in that sense, they are now praying to God, to the living God, ask for help, you know, for, for comfort. And when people are in the depths of the conflict, uh, when they're traumatized, are they looking for Christian radio to listen to, whether you're on the Ukrainian side or perhaps those who are in Russia as well and the other uh, Eastern European nations surrounding, uh, this openness, as you say, hundreds giving their hearts to Christ, discovering and having an encounter with God because of the conflict. I'm assuming that that's, there's, that's been rising since the conflict began. Yes, of course, that is rising and, and that, is a, that is a good outcome of something that's very bad, you know, in that sense. But, of course, you see also the other side, you know, so especially, you know, like we in, 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 in our face, we know that Satan is also very much, uh, you know, busy, you know, is tempting. And so there's lots of hatred, you know, so mm-hmm. it divides the people. Uh, as, as even the Russian side says, well, Ukrainian and Russians, they, they are the same people. So like thousand years ago, there was no Russian, no Russian, no Ukraine. You know, it was a Slavic people group, you know. So they grew apart. So there are two nations, you know, two different nations, different languages, but at the same time, very close, you know, very close, even religiously. So the orthodoxy, you know, is quite, uh, quite close to, to Ukrainians and to Russians. But now with the war, People start to hate each other, you know, in that sense, and that hatred comes through as well, you know. So we have much, much more counseling, counseling, you know, how to how to get free of that hatred, you know, because they say now every Russian is an is an enemy, you know, and so on. And that's not true, you know, and every Ukrainian understands that, you know, when he thinks deeper. But in when you see the atrocities and all these 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 uh, war you know, the consequences of a war like that, you know, so it, you understand also the hatred that comes up and that Satan is very successful very often, you know, to put that hatred in your heart. In some updates that I've done on Ukraine and a coordinated effort between churches of all sorts of different denominations helping to deal with the displaced people uh, who've been forced out of their hometowns and finding some level of sanctuary and shelter in churches in some of the more peaceful parts of Ukraine. Is that coordinated effort something that FEBC has been uh, also promoting? Well, um, that happens out, you know, automatically. Like, the, like now everybody says in the news you read it that Ukraine has never been 
so united as it is now, you know, which is true. The same among Christians of different denominations and so on. Of course, they are much more united now because they have a major enemy, you know, and that creates a unity among them as well. So for that reason, there's less less fightings among among Christians, if you will, or among Ukrainians. So there was much more uh, device. It was much more divisive before February twenty fourth, you know. So now it's more kind of united because of the common enemy, you know, in that sense. So that's why I always in Christian, you know, ministries, I always say, well, we should we should blame Satan much more, but I don't know, you know. So <laughs> have a common enemy, you know, and then it would help us to overlook some of the differences among Again, ourselves. it's a little bit like that silver lining when you have, as you say, division, denominational divisions, uh, challenges across the culture of church in Ukraine. And now that you have a common enemy, you can put those things aside and unite. Now, Rudy, I know that your story uh, dates back to uh, many decades ago. Uh, you actually had an experience with Christian radio that's actually brought about your own uh, Christian testimony. I wonder if you can take us into your story briefly. Well, yeah, I, I grew up after war. You know, I was born in the, in the mid-50s, you know, so that was already past war, World War II. My parents were exiled to the to the Urals, which is what, that's where Siberia begins, you know, but then I grew up in Siberia and West Siberia, and they became followers of Christ uh, shortly after the wartime. You know, they were teenagers during the wartime, my parents, and so so I already was born in a Christian family. And so growing up, of course, it was difficult. Like every teacher, you know, from the first grade, you had to be an October child. You know, I, I rejected that even. So my parents couldn't tell me not to participate in that communist children's league because they would end up in, you know, could up in prison, you know, for that. So we always protected them as... So you can imagine a six, six, seven years old boy just debating a teacher, you know, well, well, people, you know, but they had to teach atheism, and so, so we we rejected that, and so he said, no, 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 our parents had nothing to do with it. That's our decision, it's my decision, you know. Can you imagine a boy <laughs> talking with an adult, yeah. educated person with university degrees, and so, but that helped us, helped us to think. I remember now, you know, later on, some people told me, I know why you are so stubbornly, you know, uh, believer, you know, because we made you think. And I said, thank you, that's true. I agree with that. So actually, we, were, we, we, we had to think on our own and then make a decision. But back in Siberia, that's where I listened to the first FEBC broadcast via shortwave from, from the Philippines then. And now you lead the organization FEBC Eurasia, starting your life born into a Russian family and then your journey in the underground church in Siberia and your exposure to FEBC. Uh, let me just ask you, is there a perception you have or an expectation you have for any sort of resolution to the conflict that's happening now between Russia and Ukraine in the times that might be just ahead of us? Well, uh, I can tell you what my wish is and my my hope is um, what will happen, I tell you, after it happens, you know. So, <laughs> But my wish would be that Moscow would, um, uh, the Moscow and the Russian government, you know, kind of whatever will happen, will follow what Kiev is doing. Which is possible. It's not because in the early 90s, you know, that happened. The openness, you, you, you might remember that, you know. So we, we, came, in, we came into Russia. We, we, we registered Christian broadcasting you know, societies, you know. And so we did local broadcasts. We still do it, you know. So it's more and more difficult now. But in the 90s, we, we shared the gospel openly in schools, in public schools, which is now difficult even in the Western countries, you know. So we did that in the 90s. We, we went into prisons, you know, um, very openly. We were invited by those communists and KGBs and so on, all those, un, those, those bad people that was in the Cold War. They invited us. They welcomed, welcomed us. And we came in and we shared the gospel. We, we were talking about, Jesus, basically, and many people came to know the Lord, you know, so that that time could come back, you know, so that's my wish. 
And no doubt there are those listening who will keep you in their prayers because they're interested in what's happening in the conflict, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. And FEBC, which stands for Far East Broadcasting Company, one of the big Christian broadcasters in the world and operating both in Russia and Ukraine, along with other nations like Moldova and Central Asia. Uh, Rudy Weans is our special guest. And Rudy, for people who'd like to support you by prayer or a financial ability to be able to support the good work of FEBC, let me point them to the FEBC Australia website, febc.org.au, febc.org.au. Rudy Weans, Veteran Minister, overseeing FEBC Eurasia. Rudy, thank you so much for sharing these thoughts with us today on 2020. Thank you. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.